Hey guys, this is Shane. Today I'll be talking about ISYE 6644 simulation and modeling. So I took this course this semester, fall of 2022, and I actually just got my grade today, which was A, amazingly. Anyway, in this video, I'll give you a whole class structure and some tips at the end on how you can also make an A in this course. By the way, this is one of the most difficult courses for this program because it's very much math heavy. Don't let that scare you. Yes, I did have computer science background, which meant that I had to take a lot of math like linear algebra, calculus 1, 2, uh, discrete mathematics, uh, probability and statistics. However, I actually forgot mostly all of them <laughs> um, and I had to go through the primer, which they do give you for this course uh, as part of like your week two, I believe. Um, this is one of those courses where you don't necessarily need to search outside uh, in a sense that you don't necessarily need to go to YouTube to find things. So it's pretty much a self-contained course and I feel like this is the only course in that fashion. Anyway, let's go ahead and go through each of the slides that I put together for you guys. I'm putting this shameless plug here to encourage you to buy me a coffee because YouTube really doesn't pay me much to make these type of videos because <laughs> I don't have a lot of use in these videos, uh, which is why I'm not making a lot of money. So if you have have some pennies or change don't don't send me pennies but if you have some change in your digital wallet that you want to get rid of just send it my way so I can buy a coffee with it anyway let's move on to the next slide so this is the grading structure of this course you have homework that is 10 percentage bonus uh, which is 2.5 percentage of your overall grade project 10 percentage midterm one and midterm two 25 percent each and final exam, which is 30 percentage. So overall, you will have the ability to get 102.5 percentage in this course. On the right side of the screen, you can kind of look at a breakdown um, of items along with the due dates. The due dates that I have listed here is actually not accurate. The way I made my due date, so these are the due date for me, not necessarily for those items. So for example, if one of these items are available on Friday, the following weekend, so two days after that, I'm saying I need to finish it uh, so I can make sure that, you know, I don't fall behind. And there's a sense of, you know, accomplishment you get from typing in complete in your status. Uh, it's just, I don't know how to explain it. it it's really cool. Don't let this breakdown of items and due dates scare you. Um, this is, again, one of the most difficult courses in uh, this program. And what I have done is I took one day at a time. Um, so what that means is if I don't understand something, I, you know, post in Piazza, try to understand and move on. Don't feel stressed already. All right. Go in there with the positive mind. And I promise you, you will do very good in this course. Let's now talk about homework. So we have 13 weekly homework if you're taking it in fall or spring semester and if you plan to take this course in summer you have 10 homework and towards the end of this video i will tell you what i recommend or what semester i recommend you to take this course and you also have bonus questions that 2.5 percentage is sort of like split by 10 so usually it accompanies the weekly homework that you're going to do so in fall and spring semester you have to do 10 and in summer you only have eight now let's talk about project so you have 30 plus project options to choose from and one of which is actually sort of like a, a real life situations that you may have at your work that you want to model using arena or simpy or excel even you can have up to four members in your group uh, or you can do this by yourself each project topic has like a limit of members you can have so what that means is you might review topic number two which seems to be the easiest but there's a max of two members so if you have a group of three people obviously you're not going to be able to choose that option so what i highly recommend you to do is find your people through piazza slack and then review the project options to ultimately make it official to say like, okay, out of the four or five people you know, which ones do you wanna pick and choose uh, to create a group of two or three? There are two deliverables for this project. The first one is progress report, which is one to two pages per group. The reason why I say per group is because regardless of how many members you have, that is the bare minimum you need to have, one to two pages. And these individual breakdown of items that I have listed under these deliverables, this is all you need to mention in your report to make 100% in that project deliverable. Historically, project has been very lenient, like they grade it very leniently. So as long as you gave them the deliverables and you have quality work, very likely you will get a 10 percentage. And by the way, for the final report, you also need to attach as a SIP your Arena or your Excel that you used to create your model. To give you some context on my project, 
I had four members in my team and we decided to use the realistic topic. So we created an arena simulation to identify the supply and demand of a grocery store based on like top three grocery product items. And to be honest, it was very interesting to do this project, uh, especially in arena. And so if you're someone who doesn't like any of the project options that they gave you, you can make it your own and very likely they will approve it as long as they can, you know, kind of justify that this is worth three or four weeks of work. Now let's talk about midterms and final. Here I have sort of a breakdown on what to expect for each of the midterms. So for example, midterm one, you have 34 questions, about 70 percentage is math problems and about 30 percentage of that is theory. For midterm two, there were 40 questions this time and 60 percentage of that it was a theory so multiple choices and true or false pretty much and 40 percentage was math problems and in the final 50 percentage were math problems and 50 percentage were concepts and final is cumulative which I forgot to mention here as a, as a bullet point you need to make sure that you fully understand your concepts from midterm one and midterm two to do well in final this is one of those courses that build upon each other. So it's very important for you to know your basics. It's very important for you to identify the distribution. How do you do the integral or the summation based on if it's a PMF or a PDF? So I don't want to scare you much with the details, but it's important for you to understand those concepts. Finally, I'm going to give you some tips on how you can make an A in this course. The first tip I always give to everyone I talk to is do not wait until last minute. You might think you have free time tomorrow, but you don't know what life could throw you so it's very important as soon as something is available just go ahead and do it the second tip I have is choose two to three per group if you're someone who likes to be solo that's completely fine but I prefer to have a good conversations you know with, with my group members so it's very important for you to find two or three people to work with and they can also help you when you're studying with them for midterms and final make sure these people that you're choosing are reliable and you can find members through slack or piazza and once you find the members through slack or piazza Piazza, search them in LinkedIn to identify their actual background because people could say some random crazy stuff while they're working as someone like a data entry job. I swear to God, <laughs> that could possibly happen. I would recommend you to take this course in summer because there's one module that they completely wipe out in summer and that one module that they're getting rid of has hundred and 25 slides that you have to go through to prepare for your final. So I highly recommend you to take this course in summer. It is possible, although I didn't take it in summer, I highly recommend you to take this in summer, maybe by itself. And by the way, I took this course with another course called DMSL. I'll be doing a video soon around that course as well. So, so if you're wondering if this course is possible to take with something else, I wouldn't recommend what I did, uh, which was taking uh, data mining and statistical learning, you could probably take something like a business course if you are going in the business track. I would also recommend to meet with your teammates at least once a week. It is very important for you to have a good schedule with these people, all right? Some people are lazy. I mean, I swear to God, they are lazy and they don't wanna get things done. So having a project meeting on their calendar and you have to force them to join, by the way. I don't know how you would force them, <laughs> but you would have to force them to join in this meeting so you can make sure every Everybody is doing what they need to do. We should not have any members using someone else because they are lazy. For the exams, what you could do to do very well is to do the practical exams. So understand the concepts of the practical exams and it is somewhat similar to your exams at least for the math so they give you two versions of exam they give you 2018 and 2019 at least that's what they did for me and they also accompanied it with like a youtube video of a ta breaking down each question which was so helpful i feel like that was one of the reasons why i did very well in this course because i literally sat there and watched the three ever ta video breaking down each of the question and if you have any further questions on the solutions that the TA showed you, you could, you know, create a Piazza post and someone will respond to you. And finally, it is so important for you to get a TI-84 calculator. Like it is a lifesaver, I promise you. There's a lot of functions in TI-84, like the ability to plot functions and to be able to find zeros from that plot, um, to be able to do derivative, anti-derivative, all this other cool stuff you can do. Even You can even program how to do a module. So highly recommend you to get a TI-84. Uh, borrow it from someone that you know from high school maybe. <laughs> or even college. I feel like, yeah, college. Yeah, college. I'm pretty sure you use this in college. So make sure you borrow it from a friend who have the TI-84 calculator just laying around under their sofa. And that's it. 
don't forget to send me some cash in Cash App or Venmo or you know buy me a coffee if you're if you have an account there I don't know why you would and if you want to connect with me uh, the best way to do that is through comments but I cannot promise to respond to each and every one of you I actually had someone send me five dollar in Venmo along with the question and you better believe I answered it right away <laughs> all right I'm not recommending anything here but that's a good way to get someone's attention. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.